because that's my one obvious. I is it. wanting to do it perfectly and not getting in the way. I think that's going to naturally fall off. Okay. As you start to really spend more time sustained in the absence of thought. That makes sense. Do you feel you've achieved sustaining a space between thoughts? You know, there's an end of a thought and then there's... Oh, it's, I've achieved more than that. Okay, good. Great. I, I, so I, you're not intellectualizing... Not at all. Um, in fact, it's not just a space between the thinking. The thinking fucking stops while I'm doing it. And I have to somehow come back to myself to remember it's okay to now think again. Do you think you'd be able to teach someone how to get there? Yes. Tell me how. Paying attention to the breathing is the makes it virtually impossible to pay attention to these thoughts. I do you know how many times I said that in classes? If you guys are really paying attention on a quality and full inhale the rest is gone. and a complete exhale plus balancing in this weird ass pose, there's no room to think about your ex boyfriend. I don't know or whatever. I, I wouldn't I don't I didn't I don't know about the there's no room to. I just know it stops. Well, um, I think that you also come with a little I mean everyone's everyone It doesn't matter what you call yeah. it. The fact of the matter is they don't both happen at the same time. What does it? Paying attention to the breathing right. and those words in my mind. That that um that uh that's preceding the absence of thought. It, it, it's causing it. It's a cousin of it. They a go, cousin. <laughs> they, they go together. They're the same thing. You okay, so, so you both. would watch your breath and then... And then I, I'm not even aware that I'm not thinking. I'm so just I'm not a thinking. person who's never heard of breathing and I've never learned how to get to a place without, without thought. So you would teach it to me as watch your breathing. Well, I would take a step before that. I would say... This will take me a minute to say. I think this is good for your learning. I, 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 it'll take me a minute to say. I know that. It has take your time. It has steps. The first thing I'd say is... Tell me how you feel about yourself, generally, in terms of paying attention. Are you good at that? Are you not so good at that? That's where I'd start. Then I would move to, depending on what the answer was, um, are you aware of categories in which some are just so easy to pay attention to and some are just murder to pay attention to? Let's talk about that and see if there's something about those it will mean something to your progress. The next thing I would say is, where it finally meets the, what I think of as the classical yoga path. What oh, I lost you there, but... This is the third thing I want to say, okay. and I think it's where it meets the classical yoga path. Um, the one thing that is vital to all kinds of internal peace and growth, which I have is the same thing, is to pay attention specifically to breathing. I would have first started, are you good or bad at it? Are there categories of it? Let's talk about that category and how important it is. Um, at that point, once that was understood, I would say the elements of breathing lend themselves to being paid attention to. There's the in and there's the out. And they have body components and effects on your body components that you can actually pay attention to. And I'm calling your attention to them so that you will pay attention to them. For example, when you breathe in, you can feel your stomach expanding if you're doing it right. Pay attention to that. When you're getting rid of all the air, there'll be a moment at which it really feels weird. Pay attention to that, because now you have none. Um, Make sure you have none. And, 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 and continue until you have none. And that attention about that will at some point say to you, holy shit, I don't have any. Right. That's where you were going. Then, in things that, I can't think of anything else like this in my experience, and I didn't just get it, where attention is being paid to a cycle of in and out or up and down, or whatever, whatever. Usually, it's just paying attention to, let's say, nature, or paying attention, let's say, to the wind blowing, or whatever, but that's not a cycle. This is a cycle, and not only that, it's a cycle you're in control of. 
I used to say in class, and I'd come up with all different kinds of ways to encourage them to empower themselves in this way. Um, one thing I'd say, you're exercising your right as a human being, as a spiritual being, to focus on what you choose to focus on Bingo. when you choose to focus on it and for as long as you choose to focus on it. Not to be dragged off by any thought or any emotion. That's it exactly. I, I couldn't agree more. But I don't think I don't think a lot of people get that. It's kind of an advanced thought. I am right on. gifted, particularly gifted, in explaining. I don't know where that came from. I was just gonna say I'm so glad I'm recording this. Uh, I'm gonna write it down what you said because that's such an amazing like to be able to teach in reading stuff like this. Yes, because like okay, like is uh, some people like are is math and and science stuff that's easy for you to pay. do. You find it difficult to pay attention completely, and then it's like from there you can go to okay breath. But do you think about your breath? Some people have never thought about it. I'll you know, you, most people. I'll give you an example of what you just said as it applies to what I was saying. If, for example, in the second question about categories, they said, I'm pretty good at it, but I'm really good in this category. What category? So when I read a good book, I am paying such deep attention. I said, cool. The book now is called Breathing. Right. Do that the way you do that. Because I found the thing you know you can do. I'm going to just substitute a thing like that thing and do what you did, but for this. That's why that works. Um, I would never say improve your paying attention to things you now know to pay attention well to. I don't care about that. We're going about breathing. I just wanted to find the thing you can pay attention to and then transfer it because there's an experience that we are in control of. One of the things about that experience I would mention is that while you're having it, it almost negates itself. That's the loop I'm going to try to beat, that hit, that wanting to be perfect about it. It happens by itself. As you said, the deeper I get into it, the less of it will happen. So when you're reading a book and you're like, will she love him? Will he kiss her? You're not thinking I'm paying attention. You just are. That's what we're looking for. Otherwise, you're intellectualizing the process and you're having thoughts. That isn't it. That's how I would approach, based on what they already experienced. That tells me a lot about where you are, and I love it. What I'd like to do, do you have anything more else to say? I don't think so. Give me a second, I'll check. You stay down and relax. Yes, in my, yes, when I put myself in the position you asked me to be, how would I teach you? I would say, in our relationships to others, there are attachments and connections. The attachments are codependent, they're not cool, they're based on need. Are you talking about to people or to? Others, to people. Okay. Um, there are attachments and there are connections. Attachments are codependent and based on need. Um, you get stuck in them. And if you don't get it, you feel bad because you needed it. Connections are the opposite. You just have something going. That if you didn't have it, that would be okay. And if you did have it, that's okay too. It's nice. Um, and that once you recognize that in your life with people, both of those are operating uh, in different balances. Some people are just all attached. Some people have let that go, almost all, but not ever all, all. Um, and they just are connected. How you would know that, I would say, is that um, in separation, Attachment would be in great pain. Connection would be hoping and helping that person to do well after you were no longer together. Because you were connected to them. The connection is a spirit to spirit thing. The attachment is a conditioning to conditioning thing. Ego thing. Yes. Um, and that once they had sort of agreed or, or recognized or accepted or whatever it is that they take that in they say oh yeah you're right very often I'm this sometimes I'm that I would then say we don't want to be attached no. to our breathing we want to be connected to it that's the magic of it that being attached to it is part of where my hitch comes from I have a need to be perfect so it's getting in my way. You said it'll go away, and I'm sure it will. But in terms of teaching this to a, a beginner, 
I would say to them, connect to your breathing. That the attention we're talking about is identifying you with it. It's you. Then with, there is no you. That's how I would do it. And, and, and I would always, give me one last second. Take as many as you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I pretty much would always say, Well, I, I, it, it's a little complicated because I would I tend to project onto others the problems I have, which is unreasonable. What was in your mind just that? The hitch. Oh, okay. The perfection thing. Like, I, oh, like thinking that, assuming that they might have that perfect. problem. Everybody wants to get, down get kudos and A pluses, they did it so well. And that's a perfection thing. And, and a, a stroke. Words, words of uh, whatever, that's my language of love, is words of affirmation. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 lie down yeah. and stay. Um, affirmation comes through connection. Um, no, I'm saying I'm always wanting praise like you. And to oh, be, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, then that's me, and that's attachment. Having said all that, um, I would, I would mention as lightly as I could, but still mentioning it. I think it would be the last thing I would say. Pay attention to how it feels afterwards. Now you're not in a, a yoga model, you're not breathing consciously, you're not paying attention and doing all that stuff, you're just done with that for now, you've done your 20 minutes or whatever. Just for a minute or so, could be less. Just pay attention to what difference you may notice. You just added to your homework. After the 20 minutes every morning, I want you to do that. I do, I'll okay. tell you exactly what happens. Well, do you want to get through some breathing right now? Yes, yes, let's do that. Well, now let's make sure you're finished, though, because that was a really good neural exercise for you. I, I believe that's the last thing I would say is to, to acknowledge to yourself how different you may feel after this than before. And then you'd give them my phone number. <laughs> give them As your a phone referral. number. Lie down, I said, and stay. Okay, now what I want to do is, because um, I think this is going to be a better style for you, is just explain one word. I wanted to go through that. Um, that quote, the breath is the doorway to meditation, the meditation. Okay, so, um, but pranayama is the Sanskrit word for breath. And what it means is life force energy is, is a common translation. But prana, life force, ayama, management of. I know you like that. But just so you know, pranayama is the management of the, the I wrote a paper about this actually. So think about how powerful this word is. You're managing the force of your life, right? So <laughs> it comes up for that. I said that in class a lot too. Like, <laughs> um, so um, we practiced just deep, conscious, segmented breathing last time. I haven't read to the book in the book if he got to a breath called Ujjayi. It's kind of spelled funny. Do you know if it's there? I'm not good with the names. There's, there's not one with like O J J. I don't know. Okay. Maybe there is. Maybe there is. So we're going to try that one. Say there's so there are uh, the alternate nostril. That's a pranayama, right? That's in there for sure. The lion's breath. That's a pranayama. This that one is saw. definitely in there. There's right. also this one. There's thousands. The nose, there's literally the hundreds. Okay. Um, but uh, there's some basic ones. But so segmented breathing, I feel like you've mastered, which is you count your inhales and your exhales until you, you're in meditation and you're not counting anymore. What about three-part breathing? Did you start that last week? I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, so three-part breathing is you want to sit up and make sure, I don't know if we're going to bring you a cushion next time, but I would never have you breathing in the, in the no, anatomical. I'm just in to oh, okay. So you want to sit up, and what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in through the nose, shoulders stay relaxed, filling up the belly from the bottom. Bottom, first part. Then the middle belly. Lift up your chest and relax your shoulders down. Then the mid middle belly. All the way to the top of the ribs. Fill the belly up with oxygen. Then three part breathing. You feel like you do it in three parts. One, two, three. Correct. And then from the top, exhaling. Question. When I breathe through my mouth, um, and I'm on the treadmill, and each time, each day I do it, since last week, um, I go deeper into the uh, interval training without having to breathe through my mouth. By the end, 
I, if to do it, I have to be breathing through my mouth. But I, I, I'm progressing in that way, and I can feel it, which... I think that's building cardiovascular health, though, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is. That's why I started doing it before I thought it, before I read the book. Right. I was thinking about breathing, I was thinking about my heart. Um, okay, my question is, before I got with you in the book, and it was all about interval training for the getting the heart working and then you'd go slower and it would relax and then it would go harder again. Um, there was a moment along the exercise of it. Uh, I had built it up to a pretty good speed with a big difference between the resting and the, and the, the working. And, and I had increased the time of doing it quite substantially. There was always a time along the way and it started to come earlier and earlier in it, which I took to be a good thing. I was always breathing through my mouth during this stage. I hadn't yet read the book. Where I could fill it up to the point where, it, you know, lung breathing, not stomach breathing, and mouth breathing, not nose breathing. I could fill it up to a point Stop. where I could feel the, I had gotten the whole thing. There's a click there. It's not, sometimes you breathe deeply and it's not quite done. Yeah, I know what you mean. This, I had reached a point and it was always a, a moment of success for me. Where when you could like touch that bottom yeah, of your it was lung. all done. It was done. You couldn't do more. Now, so in terms of the three-part breathing, am I meant to fill the lungs? Well, you're filling the lungs. There's no way you're breathing without your lungs. Well, but you're visualizing here, the air going into like your colon, oxygenating all do, these how, organs. How high should I breathe? You're diaphragmically breathing up to but like the. How high should I breathe? Like I said in the beginning, to the, the top of the ribs. Of the, the, the bottom of the ribs. Top. Top of the ribs. Like right here. That's the top as far of the... as you can go up. You, you oh, know that's how a good uh, Nestor says actually in one um, one of his videos, I'll send it to you, that you tickle something at the top of your that's what I'm talking of about. cavity right here. So as high up as you can go. Thank you. That answers my question perfectly. Great. There was a, a part of me was saying, hold it, this isn't supposed to be lung breathing, it's supposed to be diaphragm breathing. So I mean you're using your lungs are involved, but or diaphragm it's called diaphragmic breath. The point is, it's not against the rules to fill your lungs. I think if you're doing it from the bottom. I don't think that, baby. I don't ever want you to. Your shoulders just have to stay down. The lungs are always going to be involved in breath, unless I'm wrong about about. Well, it's got to be going through there, and it's got to be right. through, going to bloodstream. It's just that most so of the happens. time we breathe into our chest, but your lungs go all the way down to behind your stomach. My point is, doing this third, this three part thing, I should not feel wary of not filling all my lungs. It's I think okay. it's going to come natural. Try right now. So let